This past summer, I had the privilege of traveling to Italy with my family for 17 days. I traveled to over 10 cities and I absolutely fell in love with this country for its rich culture and history. As a way of both reflecting and sharing this experience, I've compiled a list of 10 top ranked attractions or experiences that I had in Italy. Now, of course, these rankings are very personal and they were very hard to come up with, but I tried my best to narrow it down for you guys in case you were traveling to Italy sometime or you just wanted to know what were the best things to do. So anyways, I'm gonna start my way from number 10 and work my way up towards number one. So let's just get started. Starting with the famous yet simple site, we are starting at number 10 with the Leaning Tower of Pisa in the city of Pisa, Italy. The tower is super famous because it leans at an angle due to its unstable foundation. It's a bell tower that sits in a cathedral square, and so in that cathedral square there's also a baptistry and a cathedral that you can visit. My family and I only got to climb up that tower in our short amount of time there, but I must say it was really worth it. It's said that Galileo performed a famous experiment here where he dropped two cannonballs of different masses to demonstrate the law of freefall. Of course, you're gonna take the touristy and cliche pictures at the Leaning Tower of Pisa in your different poses. So I'd recommend traveling here just for that, if nothing else, and just to see that phenomenon that is the Leaning Tower. Moving on to number nine, we have the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, and it's actually the third largest church in the world, and we'll visit number one later. But for now, let's talk about this beautiful church. So as I said, this church is located in Florence and it has a beautiful and unique exterior of marble and green, white and pink. There's many sections of the church that you can visit. For example, the baptistry, the bell tower, the cathedral, but the most recommended is to climb the dome. So pro tip, when you're visiting any church in Italy, especially during the summer months, you wanna make sure that you respect the churches and a lot of them have the rules that you must cover your shoulders and you must cover your knees. They do allow scarves, so be sure to bring some of those, otherwise you can buy them there. It's important to be respectful there since it is a religious site, and many of the large churches actually have people outside making sure that you're following the dress code, and they won't let you in otherwise. So this is something I didn't know, but it's really good to know so that you can plan accordingly. But anyways, when you go inside the dome, which I'm going to talk about because it's the most famous part, you can climb the dome to get an absolutely gorgeous view of Florence. You can get those, those brick rooftops and the dome itself has an extremely detailed painting, a little bit creepy, but a very detailed painting on the top of the ceiling before you get to the actual outside of the dome to look at the view. Also, I will say that the climb is slightly claustrophobic, but it's so worth it. You get a real feel of what a Tuscan town looks like and Florence as a whole. At ranking number eight, we have what I'm going to call the Trio of Rome, mostly because I can't bear to get rid of one of these. And because they're all in very close proximity to each other, my family and I went through all of these sites in just a couple of hours. So this Trio of Rome includes the Trevi Fountain, the Spanish Steps, and the Pantheon. Of course, it's located in Rome, Italy, and each of these sites are so unique and worth seeing. And mostly you're just there to admire the exterior, so that's why I'm grouping them together. And it's a really great walk from all of these. And you get to see more Rome during those walks, so all bonus points here. Anyways, to start with the Trevi Fountain, it's just a gorgeous fountain that was used to actually bring water to the townspeople originally. Now moving on quickly, the Spanish Steps are also a cool staircase that lead to a church. Maybe I'm ignorant, but honestly, we didn't do much else beyond climbing these steps and then visiting the church. And so finally, I'm going to move on to the Pantheon. The Pantheon was the coolest for me because you can go inside and see the artwork and its unique open ceiling. The Pantheon is the most well-preserved architect from ancient Rome due to the fact that it's always remained in use for different purposes, of course, but it was never abandoned, unlike lots of parts of Rome. So the hole on top of the dome of the Pantheon is fascinating because it was and still is an architectural miracle and it was just genius. Removing that hole from the top takes off the most weight, which allows it to have been standing. It's, the Pantheon is almost 1,900 years old and it's the oldest standing dome in the world. Formerly a temple, now a church, there's tons of interesting facts about this building that's so ancient yet well-preserved. It still serves as a church today, so you do have to go in wearing respectful clothing. And okay, so I said this was the Trio of Rome, but I'm going to throw in a little bonus for this section, which is the Vittorio Emmanuel Monument. You're probably bound to just see it while walking around Rome, but this monument and the Museo Capitolini really recommended to visit in Rome. I personally loved visiting the museum. I 
had to mention it or else I'd be sad forever for leaving it out. So this monument was dedicated to the first king of all of Italy. But what's really cool that I found out about this monument is that if you look in this statue right here, Vittorio Emanuele, he's on this horse. What's really cool is that it doesn't look that large, but the underbelly of this horse is actually hollow and once hosted a dinner for 24 people inside. So it's way bigger than it looks. Even when you're in person, it's hard to imagine that 24 people could fit comfortably in there. Next up at number seven, we have the Amalfi Coast. I only spent about an hour here, sadly, but I thought it was so gorgeous and highly worth visiting. You can obviously spend days, maybe even weeks here, uh, because it's just a beautiful coastal city. It reminds me of Santorini of Greece, and some people, if you really like to go to beach cities, um, this is probably one of the top ones in Italy. So it has gorgeous beaches, but what's famous in Amalfi are the lemons. So I didn't even know this, but Limoncello, um, the lemon liqueur from Italy, is produced commonly here. If you do come to Amalfi, don't skip out on any of the lemon products. So we tried the lemon sorbet and it was so delicious, highly recommend. But yeah, it's pretty much just a gorgeous beach city and a unique view. Ranking number six, we have the famous Vatican City. Vatican City is technically its own country, but it's located in basically Rome, Italy, but you don't need a passport to enter, which is great. So when you go in, there are the most famous, the St. Peter's Basilica, which is the largest church in the world, and the Vatican Museums. So let's start with the St. Peter's Basilica. St. Peter's Basilica is the world's largest church, as I just said, and man oh man is it a work of art inside. The artwork and the sculptures inside will leave you speechless. And I'm gonna be honest, if you spend 17 days in Italy, you're gonna visit a lot and a lot of churches. And while I absolutely love churches, I love seeing them and the art inside and just visiting church in general, they start to seem pretty similar after just three or four ones. Okay, so the St. Peter's Basilica. Man, in terms of aesthetics, in terms of grandiose, in terms of sculptures and art and everything like that, there is just no comparison. <laughs> It's, it's simply gorgeous, so it's a must-see when you visit Italy. So after you visit the St. Peter's Basilica, you have the Vatican Museums. And the Vatican Museums, they're just huge. You could spend hours or even days looking at this art. There's a great collection of art dedicated to the church, but the main attraction is the Sistine Chapel. So I'm just going to skip over all the art because there is a ton of that. But let's talk about the Sistine Chapel, right? The Sistine Chapel is the chapel that is dedicated to the Pope. And so what's really special about the Sistine Chapel is the ceiling art that's done by none other than Michelangelo himself. This chapel also just left me utterly speechless. But why aren't I showing it, you may ask? Because technically there's no photography or videography allowed in the Sistine Chapel. I respected the rule, but also just basking in its beauty was, it's so recommended. I'm actually really glad they said no filming or taking photos aloud because you can just admire the beauty so richly and deeply. You can just look up pictures online. I'll probably put one here just so you can see it, but going to see it in person is there's no comparison. But fun fact, Michelangelo really did not want to paint the Sistine Chapel. Because he considers himself a sculptor, he didn't really want to paint. He didn't really enjoy painting. He hated it so much that he wrote a poem about how much he hated painting the Sistine Chapel. So just to wrap up this section about Vatican City, pro tip, if you visit on Sunday, you get to see the service and anybody is welcome to attend the service in St. Peter's Basilica, which is really cool. However, on Sunday, everything else is closed. The Vatican Museums are closed, the Sistine Chapel is closed. Sistine Chapel is part of the Vatican Museums. So don't make the mistake that we did, so we had to come twice because it was closed on Sunday, the Vatican Museums that is. But anyways, I also did really enjoy seeing the service, so pick your bottles, whichever one. You can't go wrong either way, but it's just good to know. Okay, so we're halfway there. Now let's talk about the ranking number five, which I gave to the beautiful city of Venice, Italy. It is such a unique city, and I'm sure we've all heard of it to some capacity. We've heard of the boats and everything, but to see it in real life is just stunning. Straight out of a Shakespearean play, Venice is a city that runs completely by water canals and by foot. Not a single car. I don't know why I was so shocked by this. Just to know that somewhere like this still exists is, is so refreshing. But there's not a single car. All the buses and taxis and everything, it's they're all boats. So honestly, it felt a bit like time travel being here. The streets are incredibly narrow at some places. It feels like a one-way in the streets, even walking-wise. Like, even just people walking, it felt like a one-way. But the gondolas are dreamy, and all the buildings still have a feel from a different era. So, I have nothing specific to recommend here. Um, there's a church that you can visit. 
with mosaic paintings. That's really famous. There's a famous prison. But overall, I'd just say the city itself is enough. Oh wait, there's one little island that I would recommend, and it's the island of Burano, which is called Rainbow Island. The houses there are all different colors, and it's super unique, super picturesque. It's gorgeous, like the reflection of all those different color buildings, but apparently it's because it used to be a fishing island, and the houses were painted dramatically different colors to distinguish in the heavy fog when the fishermen would come back. Overall, Venice was just so gorgeous for the water, the canals, the boats, and such a unique way of living. At ranking number four, we have the city of Pompeii. This ancient city of Pompeii, which lays in ruins, wow, this place just blew my mind. So it's located near the city of Naples, Italy, or Napoli. So if you know anything about Pompeii, it's probably that a volcano erupted Mount Vesuvius around it and completely just killed that place immediately. There's two misconceptions that I learned about Pompeii. It's that number one, I kind of imagined there to be like lava that covered that place. No, it was just ashes. The ashes came down like snow and killed people immediately because of the poisonous gases. What's important to know that our tour guide told us is that the ash didn't destroy Pompeii, it preserved it. So that when you go to visit Pompeii, you can see a very detailed city. You can see people's houses, their old mansions, you can see the bodies of people, um, the horses. So there's the oldest amphitheater that we see. It's very similar to the Colosseum, but much smaller. We'll get to that. What I thought was really cool is that as you walk along, you can see the shops. You can see the shops that the ancient people used to go to. You can see there's like dents on the, on the ground that show that there were sliding doors that indicated that it was a shop. You can see some of the marble finished. You can see a lot of paintings on the walls. You can see how much life there used to be there. And it's so crazy and so special. So that is Pompeii and it is such an incredible sight to see. Now we've made it to the final three. For number three, we have the Colosseum plus the Forum. The Colosseum is one of the seven wonders of the world. Of course I have to mention it here. It's one of the landmarks of ancient Rome. So in ancient Rome, they used to have these gladiator games, which is actually the Hunger Games. If you guys know that series, it is based off of these gladiator games. In these gladiator games, the ancient Romans, they would basically just pin two people or people versus animals to kill each other and see who won. Anyways, if you want to look that up or watch a movie, The Gladiator, you can get a better idea of that. So the Colosseum is a massive historic site. It's a giant amphitheater, the largest amphitheater of ancient Rome. I highly recommend a tour guide here because the tour guide here, first of all, allows you to skip the line. That happens anywhere, but especially here, the tour guide really made the Colosseum and the Forum come to life for us. The Colosseum and the Forum are linked because the Forum was like the center, the heart of ancient Rome. There is also an old palace there. You can see one of the first palaces. But the art tour guide really gave us so many details about what life was like in ancient Rome, as well as what the Colosseum, what the gladiator games were like. She told us about how the tournaments took place, down to the details of how a slave would lead a lion out into the arena without getting killed themselves. So just the detail of this place, the history, you can, you know, newly the Colosseum Underground has been opened. So you can see like what went on behind the scenes of those games. The place is just fascinating. So Colosseum and the Forum, amazing places to visit. Okay, so at ranking number two, we're almost there. We have the Uffizi Gallery and the Michelangelo David statue. So located in Florence, Italy, both of these things, I'm going to start with the Uffizi Gallery. Florence, Italy is the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance, and so all that art, it mostly came from Florence. There's the Uffizi Gallery, which is one of the top galleries of the world. It houses some of the most famous paintings, such as The Birth of Venus, Primavera, Medusa, among so many others. Finally, I'll move on to something that moved me so deeply, and that is Michelangelo's David. For years and perhaps my whole life, I had known, at least subconsciously, the face of David. Never understanding why it was so famous or impressive, and even now I still have trouble understanding art, but the second I walked into this academia gallery to see David in person, completely ignorant of what this sculpture would do to me, I wish I could go on describing everything about this work of art, but then I would have to retitle this video random girl fangirls over David for like 20 minutes straight. But you guys are just gonna have to trust me when I say that this is so worth going to see. I finally understand why people travel across the world just to see this sculpture. 
I don't think art has ever made me feel anything except a deep appreciation for the detail and work that went into it. And no matter how hard I tried to understand, I just struggled with art. But this piece of art, it was effortless. The second I saw it, it was, it was, honestly, it was like a spiritual experience. I truly had never felt so deeply moved by something like that. I felt for the first time looking at a piece of art. I'm so moved that to this day, I'm ranking it as one of the top two experiences I had in Italy. So to end with this section, I think Michelangelo himself puts it best. I saw the angel inside the marble and carved until I set him free. Finally, we've arrived at number one, my favorite experience of Italy. My favorite experience, number one, is the Vespa tour that we took around the Tuscan Hills in Florence, Italy. You get to ride a Vespa, which was invented in Italy, and Vespa means wasp because of the sound it makes and also how it kind of like zips through traffic. I think it was a really cool experience to ride a Vespa just in general, but it was accompanied by the most incredible views of Florence from atop. You get to ride on the Tuscan Hills with the guided tour. I know this one is on the pricier side, but I genuinely think it was so worth it just because of how magical that experience was. And riding the Vespa also kind of made you feel like a local since that's what the locals there did used to ride, like for example, just to work and things like that. Also on that tour, we got to meet new people. We got to share a meal with and trying the wine made in Tuscany. I think that was so rewarding and it was the only part of this trip that I didn't even think about filming because of how incredible it was. I was so captivated by the views and by the experience as a whole that I completely forgot about filming. But shout out to my mom for taking these clips anyways. But yeah, my number one I highly recommend is doing a tour, whether it's bike or Vespa or whatever of the hillside of Florence, so gorgeous. So now that we've gotten through all 10, I have one little bonus and that is to visit Cremona, Italy. I'm just plugging this because I'm a violinist and I absolutely loved visiting the birthplace of violins. Cremona, Italy is where violins were invented and it houses the Violin Museum, which has a great collection of Stradivari, Guarneri, and Amati violins and cellos and just string instruments but it's gorgeous and I have a separate video for that. I'll link it in the description because that deserved a separate vlog of its own. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Italy is one of the most beautiful countries I've ever visited. So rich in everything that I just mentioned. And again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.